Welcome to the secret society of second-born royals. Probably all wondering, what are my powers? <gasps> There's a special gene exclusive to second-borns of royal bloodlines. Super senses? Whoa. Well, what are you waiting for? A royal invitation? Let's go! Being second-born doesn't mean you're second-best. Finally, a Disney movie for the person who has 200 Instagram videos about how they really wish Frozen was a lot more like Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Secret Society of Second Born Royals is about Princess Sam, who hates being a princess, but she makes up for it because she's in a band and is a rebel who gets arrested for protesting non-specific causes. And when her friend says, I wish I was a royal, she says, ugh, why? It's so hard. So as you can see, this movie is totally relatable. This is a character who, when her older sister asks her, why can't you be happy for me? I'm about to be made queen. Princess Sam says, sorry, I just don't get why you're happy. Why would you want to be queen? My God, even Jan Brady would tell this character to lighten the hell up. Oh, and she's also a superhero, because thank God, she's had it so rough before. Sure, let's give her powers. I feel safe. Upon going to summer school, which feels like the breakfast club made up of the worst vlogger stereotypes, they find out they're really superheroes and are inducted into the secret society of second-born royals. Imagine spy kids if your first instinct was to drop them off on the steps of a convent. These are characters who, when upon finding out they have superpowers, their first instinct is to complain that their phones are taken away. Training sessions involve deciphering wishes to Santa Claus. Invisible Girl figures out how to use her power of invisibility because her trainer threatens to show her face on Instagram without makeup on. After they fail a mission, oh, never mind that, it's time for a beach party montage. This is a movie perfectly designed to make you root for the villain. It's as relatable as a guy who buys gold just to launch it into the sun. As far as the dialogue goes, it's the kind of movie that thinks it's being clever by opening with narration that says, I'm sure you know all those usual princess fairy tales. This is not one of those stories. Right? God forbid it's one of the good Disney princess movies. Exposition monologues begin with, for the last thousand years. Their motto is summed up with, they're the heirs, we're the spares. There's references to the Avengers and the Lion King, cause Disney. And I don't know how great of an idea it was for our lead's pet name from her father to be Snowflake. I've never seen a more unrelatable, detestable, entitled, spoiled brat of a self-righteous lead character in a movie like this. This makes Artemis Fowl look like beasts of no nation. And it's like this through the whole movie. When she's shocked to find out her responsible sister isn't so much into Princess Sam's down with the monarchy campaign, she expresses her sadness by playing a guitar solo in her large personal rock band room. Finally, a superhero movie made specifically for assholes. Apparently, it's easier than you think to confuse Richie Rich for Scarlett O'Hara. But hey, at least Princess, I need to find my place in this world, has the power to read thoughts, I think. I'm sort of confused as to what her powers are. But she plays brain telephone with a fly at one point. And wow, do you need to see the scene where butterflies save her from falling off of a church. It looks like watching someone get saved by a screensaver. I give this movie a big fat D-. I want Mo Howard to shove a pie in its face. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel today, plus follow us on Twitter at The Cinema Snob. We'll see you next time.